So if you look at the history of uh, how like there has been a lot of uh, Islamic contribution to modern day science, uh, but unfortunately that all the contribution that came from the Middle Islamic Middle Ages, Golden Ages, for some reason has been neglected by the West. So my question for a non-Rashid, Sheikh Adnan Rashid was that why is this the case or even, or is it the case actually? So let's see how he answered the question. And I really admire how he answered this question with uh, his knowledge and academic uh, acumen. Uh, so I hope you like this video. This claim that Islamic contribution is directly neglected by Western scholarship has been made by Western scholars themselves. And this was noted for the first time in the 19th century during the colonial period. So there is a, a historian of science, his name was John William Draper, an American historian of science who has written a book on conflict between religion and science. He writes in his book, The Intellectual Development of uh, Europe, the, the History of the Intellectual Development of Europe. John William Draper authored this book in two volumes. It was published in the 19th century, uh, in the 1860s. He writes in this book, I don't remember the page number, he writes that the way European scholarship has ignored the Islamic contribution to the development of Euro Europeans in particular, intellectually speaking, is, um, he, uh, he uses the word, deplorable. This is his word. It is deplorable the way European scholarship have, has deliberately ignored uh, the contribution of the Muslims. That's what he said, right? And this is, according to him, was based upon religious bigotry. So during the colonial period, because a lot of these colonial uh, administrators, authors, scholars, writers were, uh, uh, you know, some in some sh form or shape were Christians, they found it difficult to even pay a tribute to the Muslim civilization. And in particular, that was the case with Spanish scholarship in the 19th century that consisted mainly of churchmen. Then move forward. Victor Robinson, in his History of Madison, which was published in New York in the early 20th century, I don't remember the date exactly, he writes the same thing. That a paragraph of, or even Sina in Encyclopedia Britannica from one of the editions, one of the earlier editions has been trimmed down to even a smaller paragraph. So not only that the contribution is not mentioned fully, it has been trimmed down in subsequent editions. Then come fast forward, Maria Rosa Menocal, she is alive to this day. She is a Spanish Arabist. She has written a book titled The Arabic Role in Medieval Literature, Medieval European Literature. The Arabic Role in Medieval European Literature. And while discussing a theory uh, on a word, uh, whether it came from the Arabic origins or not, she, she says that European scholarship for some reason finds it difficult to be in, in, in debt to the Islamic civilization. So this systematic suppression of facts is there. Uh, history writing today in the world is very much Eurocentric because most uh, powerful influential institutions in the world are in the Western world. So uh, obviously it is quite natural for the scholarship to be Eurocentric. Uh, there are exceptions. There are people who are challenging that. Uh, uh, one of them is uh, Jack Goody. Jack Goody is a scholar who has written for the Cambridge University. He even uh, authored another book titled uh, uh, Other Renaissances. Other renaissances, other than the European renaissances, he claims that there are other renaissances happening in the world as well at the same time in the 15th century. India, he mentioned, and China. He said, well, China, there was no renaissance in China? Was there nothing happening in India? So is it only the Europeans who were being civilized at the time? So uh, a lot of scholars are challenging this topic. So th it is there. And the reason is, the reason is basically why it is suppressed to this day, again, is cultural prejudice, is Eurocentric view of the world, okay, uh, a secular lens on history, for example, let's say, okay, uh, and even uh, this, uh, what, what do I call it? I call it uh, uh, a, a sense of superiority complex, right? And, and scholars do have that. 
Some, some consciously, others unconsciously. Some people don't know that they, they suffer from this kind of superiority complex, that they simply can't pay tribute to other civilizations, right? So it is there, it, is, it does exist, and it is an academic subject. Scholars have actually written on this way of history writing, what we call Eurocentric history writing, okay? Uh, so um, there are many, many reasons. Uh, you know, we call it post-colonial syndrome, okay? Where even though coloni colonialism, global colonialism has collapsed, but that syndrome still exists in some minds, in some intellectuals, right? And there are other reasons like uh, cultural biases, prejudices, okay? The religious bigotry in some cases, uh, or in some cases secular bigotry. You know, people think that secular liberal historians can